think we've got enough here to declare a quorum. Uh, John is in Boston today, so he won't be here, and David is traveling. So those are two people that I know that aren't able to make it. Uh, as usual, Ruth is going to uh, put this on audio and video for us, and she's going to leave 15 minutes early, so the tape will be 15 minutes short. It's not like some presidents have done and erased the tape. We just aren't going to have a tape <laughs> So for 15 minutes worth. So uh, with that said, we'll go forward. Let me say, Emory, if Ruth would like to leave the camera so we can record the whole meeting, I'd be happy to get the camera back to her. He's got to go to another meeting. And I've take, got, and yeah. take that. Okay, you can't give up the camera. I'm <laughs> sorry. sorry. So, so I think it's acceptable that we only have 15 minutes of one meeting overall. In the yeah. uh, so with that said, do we have uh, comments from the public public commentary? Yeah, I'll just I'll add yeah, some public commentary since I'm the only public here. But uh, I'm still flabbergasted that all the models that were considered up until this time were scratched. And in particular, um, I thought the Dan model was pretty good. It seemed to me that it satisfied in a very real way, or as best it could, the actual requirement that the fee be based on a service, as stated by the law. And I think he made a good attempt at basing the fee on a service using the uh, runoff for the pervious and impervious surface. And in fact, when I calculated it for my property, I got a value of about, I think the number was 4,500 gallons of runoff for one inch rain. But remember that the model says that all the water runs off, the, mm -hmm. the land is level. Now it just soaks in, huh? Well, yes it does, because oh, he's uh, got the... It's 15% for okay. the... Soaks in, but what happens with most properties, the, 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 the road doesn't surround the entire property. So if I divide that number by four because only one side is draining into the street, I get a number that's sort of reasonable. It's not absolutely correct, but I would assume that it's relatively correct. So it satisfies the requirement that the fee be based on the service, which is to remove the stormwater. Whereas all the other models that I see here are just a way of appropriating the cost. But you guys got to figure that out. Without uh, spilling the beans, I think Dan is, is going to share a second idea with us tonight. So maybe when that comes up, we can we can talk about it then. Let me also add, Fred. I don't think we've eliminated any models whatsoever. They're still all on the table, as far as I'm concerned. I thought we trashed them all last week. We may not like them, but they're still all models we're considering. Good. Yeah, we don't have. We just haven't come up with one. I think right. that we all agree on. Okay. Other comments? Uh, uh, the next item is approval of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes to get approved: one for the ninth and one for the sixteenth. Before we do that, I want to thank our grammarian Jim Dostel for oh. reading the previous <laughs> minutes and correcting the grammar and so forth. Do I hear a motion on any of these? Both? Or, or both. Both. Yeah. I'll second that. Second. All in favor? Any Aye. comments? Discussion? Corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. I want to also appreciate Jim's uh, yes. lot of work. Yeah. Uh, the next item is any new fee algorithms, formulas, or whatever you want to call them. And uh, I think we've got two that came in. Dan has got one, and uh, and Rick Clark put one in. So who wants to go first? Who do you care? Before we start, can I just ask you, have you guys talked or did you guys develop these individually? Individually. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. With a big help. Yeah, no, I, Jim was, I talked to Jim last night about yeah, he, that, but uh, I was just curious as to whether you guys had done any any sort of no. kibitzing outside. Okay. No, no they fall in that close you're together. Not, you're not supposed to help each other with homework. <laughs> 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 I actually have two. So 
one of which is sort of just a philosophical model. So why don't you? <laughs> I'm not there yet. Yeah. Well, before, uh, before we uh, start with that, I was a little concerned we might have a discussion tonight. And so I brought some M&Ms, and, and if things get out of hand, take the green ones, okay? If you feel you want to say something and don't quite have the courage, the orange ones will really give you the fortitude. If you're totally out of hand, we have blue. They'll just... We have a code left for that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll pass these down in case. Thanks, Gary. I think I need one right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rick, you're on. Okay. Uh, basically, what, what I did was, and uh, really, Doug uh, did all the work on this. Um, and, you know, tremendous amount of uh, thanks to the uh, engineers down there. Um, to basically, in short, to get to a, a more fair uh, and equitable uh, fee, the ERU didn't allow for undeveloped land to be to be charged. So, um, I think it's important that all all property owners contribute to this. So, um, we've we've calculated a fee based on a percentage of revenue uh, that undeveloped land could pay, which uh, works out to about 5% in the end. And... Does that mean, if you're going to say, right, undeveloped land would contribute 5% of the total fund. Total revenue. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And each, basically, it's come down to each acre would pay a, a tenth of the, um, the three-family unit. Uh, ERU to to just kind of keep it uh, simple so that it can be adjusted uh, in my mind. So you'll see the the change. There's both columns there now. The ERU without the uh, undeveloped fee, and then the undeveloped fee uh, again adds up to five percent of the of the revenue. So basically, it's that simply that. And uh, here's a philosophical, you know. Uh, Reasoning behind behind my thoughts on this, so uh, I, I don't feel like there's a there's a real um, there's not a user of, of stormwater. So I, I want I want everyone to contribute. Um, I feel that's the fairest way, and without counting every drop of water, I, I just feel like this will allow for um, you know resources to be instead of being. Uh, Dedicated to data collection and the changes that will occur over time in these in these structures, uh, keeping it as simple as possible. And as I was hoping for a percentage of the ERU for, for undeveloped land, but that seems very difficult to do. So um, that's basically it. So, Rick, if I understand this correctly, when we look at the Clark ERU total, which was your original model, yeah, and then plus undeveloped land fee. So the reason that in many cases the fee is less for a variety of properties is because undeveloped properties are going to pay something. Are now now under okay. that ten. Five percent yeah. more or less. Yeah, it was not it was not very fair without okay. that. I, I agree. I'm just wanting to make sure I understand this. Yeah. Okay. What made you decide on five percent? Um talking with Doug, um, the percentage of the, of the land and the impervious surface on this uh, undeveloped land. I could probably speak directly about those numbers, um, but it's uh, it was around five percent. That would have been the, the revenue a little bit more, but um, I think that this is a fair number. And, uh, where where does uh, flood control come into this issue, if at all? I mean. I, I don't divide my, to me, it's one pot at this point. Um, we're not being asked just to, to dedicate the flood. So there's a, um, a pool of money and it might go for stormwater abatement or control or whatever, or it might go for rebuilding a levy or building a pump or whatever. There's no distinction at all between the two. It's just, okay. 
That's been true of all the models. Yeah. I don't think we tried to we pull that apart. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I think it's a great idea to do it that way. You know, to that keep money. It together. Yeah, keep it together. Yeah. It's easier, I would think. Less controversy. Yeah. yeah. So, any other questions on the ERU? I think that's the, the one I would advocate for. Um, Doug literally has been working on this all week uh, for me, so, um, you know, the, the, <laughs> it's not the only thing I'm sure he's working on. So, I, I think that this is, um, to me, it's a, it's a very simple approach to this whole process because it, it allows for some adjustments down the road, just changing the ERU unit, and everyone can sort of, it's very transparent that way. Um, I think it's important to do these to do these calculations of runoff, but in the end, I feel like we're not really handling the stormwater itself. That stormwater is going to be managed. It's going to be uh, handled. It's going away, whether we start this utility or not. Uh, we have millions of dollars in the ground already handling that stormwater. What we need is money to fix those things under the ground and, and improve that system. It's not really to, you know, do anything with this with this water. So that's how that, that's my philosophy behind it. It's not really a a management of a volume or a certain flow. It's an ongoing um, uh, rehabilitation of the system. Yeah, the the last stormwater work that was done in any magnitude was done during the Sean Dumphy administration. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, uh, they did uh, sewer separation. Then when we had storm water in the sewers, and they separated those then, and to a, to a great magnitude. Not all of them got done. Uh, we piecemealed after that, Ned knows and, and uh, Doug knows, that uh, um, it's been an ongoing thing, and uh, there's been uh, stormwater studies that have gone on here, and there are small portions of the city where they can't separate them. It's impossible. I mean, you're under the buildings on Main Street and the hotels, and you know. And but I believe, the, Jim, that the reason for the Chicopee Stormwater Enterprise Fund was in order to separate yeah, combined they, sewer overflows. Oh yeah, outfalls, yeah. yeah the Chicopee, yeah. Springfield, they haven't yeah. done any work there. Yeah. Oh, Bondi's. And they're, they're under the gun. Yeah. Still, they just allotted more. I have one question. Sure. On the one, two, and th just be so I understand, on the single family, two family, and three family, you're not looking at acreage or impervious no. or any, just, it's just this, this, and this, like they, regardless right, of size, on, based regardless on an of average, average, right? It's a flat fee for yeah. those categories. That's right. And then the tier really doesn't come into play either mm -hmm. on that. As far as, yeah. And if I look at this correctly, even when you have a single family home on less than half an acre mm -hmm. or one on three acres, you pay the same fee. That's right. You know, it gets a little tricky with open land um, in this in this method. <clears throat> you know, at one point before we came to this today was, uh, you know, you could save money by building a little house on an open lot. You know, so you got to just sort of um, dig into it. And I think this this is um, I think this is where I want to be as far as as a method going forward. On, Mm -hmm. More discussion? We're ready to move on to, to dance proposals? Mm -hmm. do, do you want to do philosophy first or numbers first? No, I'll do numbers first. Okay. You know, the, um, <laughs> I, and now I see why Chris is asking if we <laughs> shared notes yeah. because the numbers are remarkably similar. In many cases, until you get to large areas of undeveloped land, but I was just sort of curious as to... So, the... 
the one the method with numbers, which are on this spreadsheet, um, was based just entirely on impervious area. Period. It's like. So, so Felton 1 is just impervious. Felton 2 is impervious. Felton, two. Felton yeah, 1 was the original two. combined right. impervious and pervious. Felton 2 is, um, God, I, I hate to keep using the, the name here. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's good as a benchmark. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a renaming <laughs> after <Thank> we... <laughs> task Force 1, Task Force 2. Um, so this is purely based on impervious area with a minimum. So undeveloped land pays the lowest rate, which is the average single-family house, is 108 bucks. So if you don't have any impervious area, your fee is 108. Other than that, that's it. As soon no as you get how big or small your undeveloped property is, no matter how big or small. Okay. But if you have if you have impervious area on it, uh, all right. it <laughs> and it puts you at a point where you're going to pay 130 dollars, then you're going to pay 130. Okay. So I mean, it's, that's as simple as it is, okay. and it comes out to be almost identical, with the exception of the undeveloped land. But then I got, you know, I sent everybody an email. Um, I have copies of it here. People didn't read it, and the um, and I actually asked uh, Doug to put together this other table, which has a lot of the other parameters that. I think factor into at least into a fair and equitable discussion. This is the table. The smoke. This, yeah, this one. Yeah. How much stuff's home? I don't have anything. Yeah. You don't have this one? I everything's home. I. Oh. I just they just got handed out tonight. Um. So there's total area and 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 basically I asked Doug by category to go through and look at the percent by category. For for all of these different parameters. So we have total area, impervious, pervious, and then I wanted to look at what the assessors, the property values were, and what percentage of property values are represented, uh, the property tax, um, and then to look at how each of our methods breaks out in terms of percentage um, based on that. And one of the things that sort of jumps out to me, and I think it's something that we should be discussing, is the shifting of burden from residential to commercial industrial, because that is where the big shift occurs. And we've been operating under this assumption that, well, it's because of, of runoff, an impervious area, as the fundamental driver. When you take the two different aspects of what we're dealing with, one is, I think, a maintenance and monitoring, which is primarily driven by the EPA mandates. The other is infrastructure, which historically is a city responsibility to the taxpayers. It is a, uh, it's historically been covered under our taxes, and arguably it's something that should have been done all along. We're in a crisis now because it hasn't been, and now we're looking to create a new system to create this money that ostensibly should have always been part of the budget. Could you try to explain that again to help me understand it? I'm not sure I do. So, if so, flood control projects, sewer replacement, okay. all of those things would normally be capital and or maintenance projects that would sh should have been and were covered partially with a $400,000 line item okay. under the city budget, which is then dispersed, allocated, based on property value through property taxes. We don't get to include um, tax-exempt properties, because they don't pay taxes, but everybody else that pays taxes pays based on the value of their property, or the, you know, which is going to be a combination of location, income generation ability, resale value, all of those things, then goes into the city budget and gets used. Now we've got this built-up amount of projects that needs to get done, I think it's, I think it's problematic to be trying to deal with something that is essentially a capital uh, issue with a fee to try and cover that cost. I'm not entirely stuck. This is, these are thoughts. This is not my concrete position, but it really it comes to light when you look at how the percentages break out. You end up going with, you know, currently. Residential properties pay 83% of the city's taxes. 
when you get to using our fees, it comes out maybe on the high side uh, at 52%, on the low side, 48%. So it's a, and that difference in, in fund gen, revenue generation gets, you know, part of it goes to tax exempt, you know, so we achieve one goal, which is to bring tax exempt properties into paying something. But you, the jump um, really shows up in uh, across the board for commercial and industrial, which go from paying 17% of city taxes to paying anywhere from, well, in my first model, I had 18%, which was pretty close to that allocation. Um, but I would say that that model was woefully inaccurate because I had so much city property included in that first model, which you would have to redo that first model and take all of that out and it would change all of those numbers. Um, so, so that's sort of the, you know, looking at it from, again, there's uh, all kinds of stakeholders at, uh, at risk here with whatever we do. I think that's a, a consideration that we need, we need to take. And then that then leads to, should this be handled by uh, in the city budget and be handled as an override, and that's. So, so Can Dan, I speak to that. Sure, absolutely. Please. You know, historically, I I spent over twenty years on the capital improvements committee in this city, and they spend about half of the money, not even half of the money that they should on capital improvements. And they know it. Right. I know. They don't have the money to allocate to those kinds of things. And it's always we have to fund personnel in school, we have to fund police, we have to fund fire. And the second part of it is the Department of Public Works was to cut in half in Proposition 2 and a half. Proposition 2 and a half, there were 41 people in the streets division. After Proposition 2 and a half was enacted, there was 12. You know, I, 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 I understand and I know I you understand what you're, you're right on line with what you're saying, but I'm telling you the truth of it. Sure. But how does that come into fair and equitable? That's it does. Question. Exactly. And that's why our and, charge is. And down in what is fair and equitable allocation of all the funds has to be addressed. Um, I really, uh, <coughs> I, 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 I read your, um, you know, I read this and thought about it. And I, you know, I really think that there's, it's not exactly apples and oranges, but it's not really the same kind of apples. Um, impervious, it's not necessarily that the commercial is paying 17% uh, of property, pay 17% of the property taxes, that's what 17% really is, is not necessarily equitable. It's not, uh, it's not, we're, the, the, what we're talking about is stormwater. They have 31% of the impervious surface in the city is commercial industrial. Uh, that's, uh, that seems to me the, the piece that we're talking about. It's not their general tax. It's this, this specific charge. Sure. Um, and I, it just doesn't seem inequitable to ask them to spend 31% uh, of, sure. of the cost of doing that. And two, uh, capital, you know, we're, we're way behind in capital projects. Uh, we're stuck in this place, but the fee is an ongoing process. I mean, you can borrow money uh, predicated on the income from the fee, uh, rather than uh, one of these projects at a time. There, there's no uh, to ask for a two and a half override each time you want a, a capital project in the stormwater. It's just too uh, ir it's unworkable. It's not a, it's just not a, a system. I should point out that two and a half percent is not something a city ever voted for or Western Massachusetts was interested in. Uh, 
We were more interested in having control over our own uh, destiny. Yeah. But I, uh, you know, you make some points in your, about the, um, you know, the fact that the DPW may not have yet a firm hold on the numbers. But I mean, you can predicate, you know, can say that the stormwater uh, fee should not be instituted until there's a you know, verifiable, uh, you know, the numbers are verifiable. Sure. Um, I just, uh, you know, we're talking about a specific service, which is stormwater. Um, commercial industrial, uh, a lot of it is uh, congregated in the park that, in fact, will be underwater. <laughs> and the pumps fail. Uh, they have a real vested interest. We all have a vested interest. We do. Whether mm -hmm. our stormwater, if we're way out in Ward you know, 7, the water you know, never gets to the Connecticut River. But they have, we all have the same interest in, the, in, in preserving the downtown. And the other part is that we, you know, we use the roads. We use the municipal uh, structure. Uh, everybody uses that. Needs so you know the, the, that I, that your specific stormwater doesn't end up uh, being processed by the city's uh, sewer system. Just uh, it seems irrelevant to me. It seems uh, you know we're all in this, uh, particularly in floods, in disasters, we're all in this together. Uh, so and I I I, guess I totally agree with. <coughs> I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I, I totally, I'm philosophically on board with that. Yet when I look at again, when you break apart the two sections, we've got this one section which is, you know, I'm going to call it EPA mandated, EPA driven. It's the monitoring. It's the catch basin maintenance. It's all of the things that were never really planned on. It's sort of an unfunded mandate, and it's, and it is dealing primarily with the normal runoff that comes off the properties, which is in which I can totally connect the dots from that to impervious. During flood conditions, I think it really, if that's no longer that relevant. It's, we have a ton of water coming at us from a different direction. It's coming up to, you know, from out of town, upstream. It's not, the, the, the sewer pipes are unable to um, handle all of it in all places, and we have all of these things where I think that the impervious area starts becoming much less relevant, and it really becomes about protecting property. And at that point, it is about property value. And then, so how do you base a fee on impervious, you could have a, so, so here's the worst case. You have a large property with not a whole lot of value. And, and in the case of, un, so and we're acknowledging, well, if it's undeveloped, you know, it's 50 acres, but, you know, it's not developed, so we can't really charge them. But you know what? It's, technically, it's 15%. You know, if you go back to my first, the first fee that I had, you're actually, you're, now you're actually dealing with real runoff. And it and it's, gets outrageous when you start looking at what you're charging for, Woodland and pasture land and farmland, but it is more, much more equitably split if you're going to look at it from an impervious or even pervious, but from a runoff standpoint. But from a flood control standpoint, it's property value. And I think for us to have this fee that generates revenue based on that comes out so disproportionate based on the property value being protected, that's that's where I have that's where the problem came up for me. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm conflicted, I guess. Is I'm trying to bring the conflict for debate because I think this, this discussion is going to be one of the major discussions that will be happening in the city. I think the business community, I, I mean, there's no question that the residential community will be up in arms no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. The business community is going to be bullshit if they're looking at all of a sudden picking up a bulk of this fee when they either don't have revenue generating potential for the property or value inherent to the property that warrants that fee. And I, th I think this we need to address that. And there may be ways to address it, 
but my initial thought was we separate it out, and I feel like we could easily do the $400,000 or $500,000 EPA mandated fee using a, a surface area model, whether it's you know really any of the ones that we have, they're all pretty close to being the same. But when we deal with the flood control, I think we really need to take a good hard look at how how we're addressing that. And if I'm not mistaken, a huge chunk of the flood control issue is that pump house. I think if you then pull that out, it's all right. So that that needs to that's that's that by itself is an override. Deal with that. How does that change all of our? Now we're looking at sewer replacement costs. Was that five hundred thousand a year? Well, that's you know maybe that changes that you can sewer start. Sewer replacement is separate. That's in an enterprise fund by itself. Storm, right? storm, storm sewer. sewer, storm sewer. No, that's different. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. You said sewer. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, I'm just, everything we're talking about is, is okay. related to storm. All right. So I get sensitive with that, with that word. <laughs> so storm, so so storm sewer, storm yeah, drain. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't want to throw a fly in the ointment at this at this late <laughs> date, but you know we keep. It feels like we're wrestling with this every week, and I needed to get my thoughts down. When I finally did, that's what bubbled out of it. Is it just, and the data sort of supports it. It's an unfair shifting, and there may be a way around it by looking at some sort of adjustment factor or um, multiplier based on uh, site usage, site category. You know, whether it's you know, depending on what kind, of, and I, I don't know enough about the categories of property, but I, I, I know we've got classes broken out that we look at that and say, oh, this class is a 1.0, is a and this class is a 0.5, and this class is a 1.5, and that we use that to sort of try and even it out. Yeah. I, it's very helpful that you <coughs> tried to pull out conflicting threads we've all been struggling with through this whole process. Um, and I have a couple of different questions. Uh, the first is, what's the other category on the chart? Is it agricultural lands? Agricultural forestry. Okay, 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 okay. That's great, that's it. Because it really is, I share your conflictedness because it certainly makes sense in one logic field to say impervious surface is all we're going to look at. It makes another sense to say, well, we'll take a little bit of pervious surface like Terry and my model did, and mostly impervious surface. On the other hand, there's an argument that what we're really protecting is property value. And if that's the case, should not the fees reflect though technically they can't, but should they not reflect if effectively actual distribution of property values. So I had also asked Jim, and I don't think I have it here, but my concern is that people always say it's 80, 20 residential commercial property in the city. Right? There, we don't know what the value of the non-profit, we, we, don't, we don't have access to the value of the non-profit property, but I'm sure there are such figures. So let's just suppose that what if we had those figures and took out the city entirely, residential property value would be 70%. And the commercial value would be 15%. I'm just making these numbers up, but I think they're roughly correct. And the nonprofits would be 15%. So that logic says, how do we have people's fees be as proportionate as we can to property values? Right. And you know, it, it, it is interesting to look at these because if you look across the, the fields, in many, for years, they're spot on then. And it's 38 percent pervious gets a 36 percent of the total bill. They're very, very close. That's because that's all it's based on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the miracle of math. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true for many of the models. Yeah. I mean, some charge substantially more for commercial properties.
Some charge nothing for undeveloped properties. But on the whole, we have a series of models which yield the same roughly rough range of charges for most properties. And I think we really have to address the question of what equitable, does equitable mean your impervious surface, which Alex would argue strongly, I'm sure, I don't want to put words in your mouth, or is it, is it impervious and pervious, like Terry and I think? Is it property value? So we really have to, if we can deal with that question and see what the numbers are at the end of the day for any of the models and how they reflect the total <laughs> assessed value of the property in each of the categories. That would be one thing that would be important to me, to know that they're roughly congruent. We're not going to get them spot on. But if we were in the same, in the right range, I'd feel much more confident about that. Whatever logic we use, because we're going to have to have another logic, be it impervious surface or whatever right. it happens to be. And ultimately, so it, doing it will also impact property values. Mm -hmm. So the, your fee will now be, you know, when someone's looking to buy it, it's like, Jesus. How much the water, stormwater your, fee? Your tax is only two grand, but your stormwater fee is 30. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So I'm not, you know, your property value to me is, is reduced by 30%. Right, right. It's a huge impact. And, and we know that as much as the residential community is going to be upset, if the fees are not fair on some logic to the business community, Um, I'm, I haven't decided where I am on this yet, but I just wanted to throw other, one other piece of information out there, which is absent, absent property taxes. When you look at pretty much any service provision, um, it's based on usage. And so be it water or sewer or electricity, cable obviously is a little bit different, <laughs> but, but, but by and large, there's, there, it, it's what you use is what you pay pay on. And I hadn't really thought about this, this commercial aspect, so it's a new thing for me to, 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 to factor in, but I've just thrown that out there. I think Jim has a... <laughs> Everybody happy with Jim? Speak yeah. up. So be it. Yeah, I just uh, one, one thought about, uh, about some of the comments here. I think um, you need to be careful about discussion about... So the, the, the concept of property value and paying for flood control and things based on property value through taxes, I think, is um, certainly you know uh, you know reasonable idea. Um, if you think you can take the property value and somehow tie that back into the fee using some kind of percentage or other factor, I think that might be problematic under the, the structure of the general law that allows you to charge a fee. So you just want to be aware of potential legal challenge if um, you, there's some connection. It's clear between property value and the fee for stormwater. Um, that might be problematic, legally. But clearly, you know, valid point. Take a big project and say two and a half override. That should be general fund project. And obviously, another way to pay for it. Can I just comment up? I, I think that you have to be very, very careful with the residential, commercial. Uh, charges because you know when we set the tax rate we go for a factor of one we charge industry the same amount we charge uh, homeowners and homeowners realize why that's done that's done to entice industry to come into the city of Northampton and stay here And I think when we go through this, whatever we're doing for <clears throat> residential, we've got to do for industry. We've got to treat them the same way. And when you say industry, Jim, you mean all business. Yeah. So correct. You yeah. Mean restaurants, whatever, yeah. fly cleaners, all business. Yeah. But it's precedent for treating commercial and, and, and industrial property differently. I mean, the state recognizes the town's ability to charge a different property tax for commercial property. We don't do it, but we could. It doesn't seem to me that that's, you know, the, the extension of that logic goes to the, something like the stormwater fee. Uh, 
again, I, you know, the impervious, uh, you know, and say uh, flood control is about property uh, uh, protecting the, the value of property. Uh, I guess I, you know, I, it's a, you know, it's a hard, it's, it's a hard nut. It is. It is. And there's, you can argue on the other side is, is when there's a flood, businesses potentially have more, stand more to lose because it's not just property damages, it's loss of business. So the, you bring that into the discussion and that goes a little bit beyond property value. Then you start looking at sort of ancillary costs that would be incurred and what's the value of that. But I still, I do think that it's, this is a lot. I'm not sure that many other communities of our size have been looking at a stormwater fee of this magnitude. I think that's one of the issues. You know, when Westfield did it, and Westfield's a pretty good sized mm -hmm. town, you know, five bucks, whatever, a, a Twenty, quarter. Yeah. You know, you know, we're five times that amount, you know, at a $600, and I know theirs isn't mm -hmm. working, but $600 maximum for commercial. Yeah. You know, when I start seeing eight, 10, 23, Eighty-five thousand dollar bills for yeah. stormwater, so that we can get a two million dollar nut. I just think that that's there's just something wrong with it. I, it's a struggle, for me. and to know, you know, what I what would be really good to see is, you know, so you know, you know for CVS, for example. You know, they're somewhere around nineteen hundred dollars for their. Yeah. Stormwater fee. What, what's their? What are they paying in taxes? I'm assuming it's quite a bit more than that. But yeah. you know, what is? What's their value for that? And then we get to you know to to some of the uh, to stop and shop, which is a, you know it's just a huge parking lot. Did that fall off of here? Yeah. Yeah. It, here. it did. Maybe pick Leah. There's a Coca Cola. Twenty two thousand dollars now. Uh, I, I didn't get all these the, the tax amounts for those, but CBS is thirty-three thousand dollars a year. It's their tax. Thirty-three thousand dollars. So it's less per than ten percent of their tax, right? Seven, Do you have any other ones in there, individually? Um, Walmart, one hundred and fifty-nine thousand. They pay in taxes. Yes. Coca-Cola, two hundred thirty-five thousand eighty-three. Um, so the Coca-Cola store has got the in is less than 10% of its mm -hmm. annual tax. Yep. Even it's in the Dalton 2 model. Paradise Coffee is 8513 Okay. That's not it. A, a question I would, would ask is, I don't know what revenue we raise by property taxes through the year. Uh, I, I'm not clear whether this sheet a of, of, of week ago it says revenue on the bottom here. So $64 million. And whether that's tax revenue or what those numbers are. But but for thinking purposes, supposing we put the $2 million in the numerator and we put the total tax raised in the city in the denominator. The property tax revenue. Ta so property, property tax, tax revenue. And ask us, ask ourselves, how much more money or what percentage of the total tax revenue does this represent? And if that be the case, if we were to ask commercial in this case to shoulder 26% uh, of that piece of the total tax, the total tax now being the fee plus this. Why 26? Well, I just picked it off from the uh, from Dan's chart here, I said 26% of the part for stormwater. I don't see. Well, isn't it? Look down at commercial, or wait a minute, 18% in, okay. in Dan's case, but 26 in in, in your case, in the Colhain Reckman case, yeah, and, yeah. and then in, in other cases. But that's another whole way of looking at this. We're so focused on what piece of the two million dollars industry is going to pay, but the total tax base is orders of magnitude greater than that. But the only problem with that is it doesn't include any of the nonprofit value. That's right. Which is one thing we can 
Mm, sure. Yeah, we can accept that. Yeah. I, 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 and that's maybe, yeah. maybe it's 15%, but that's an important number to look at. Uh, What's the average residential tax bill? 4000 Too much. <laughs> something, like, something like that. So, so if it's 4000 with a hundred dollar stormwater fee for you know, I mean that's two percent of the value two of the tax, two and a half. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and, but but for businesses, it's a ten percent jump in their taxes. I didn't hear of any business had a ten percent. We know you sure you did. Yes. They're all they're all come out to be to be ten percent. I don't. We, we, Walmart, they're told Coca Cola, two hundred thirty five thousand. And their storm and their water storm water is twenty two thousand. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, CBS, 33,000. And. 32,000. 32. Oh, I meant CBS up here. So, in many cases, 1,861. Right, so, they're about five. Of a mm -hmm. commercial property, which has got lots of impervious surface. Right? That's right, Doug. It's it would, stormwater. It would completely and depend on the impervious surface. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Right. And, yeah. and flood okay. control. It's it's stormwater and flood control. Right. Both. <clears throat> that's not. That's right. 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 It's not separated. That's not separated. For instance, uh, an, an analogy can be made with the um, increase in the meals uh, tax in the city, which we voted for, and we put an, an additional burden on people who run a specific kind of business in the city, and we said because the city has to provide other services, uh, police, uh, cleanup, you know, there, there, are other, there are other considerations. Because of the kind you're pulling people into the city, there are other expenses. It seems to me that a business that depends on, on, a, on an acre of impervious surface is a peculiar kind of business, and it pays. Uh, it seems to me that you can say you, you're really going to have to pay, a, yeah. pay more. The other... Oh, sorry. The other part of it, this is, this might be, and I'm sorry to keep singing the same song, but these are the kinds of um, operations where um, some sort of credit incentive might actually work because they're operating on a scale where they might want to do something along those lines. Because they can afford to put yeah. in yeah. remediation of yeah. So, Which just, is just, just, just something to throw out there. Yep. You're right. But then it has to be meaningful in terms of its. Well, you know, it's not, now we're not talking ten percent. We're talking maybe fifty or seventy-five percent. I'll, I'll tell you, if if you had a chance to look at the uh, the Northeast I I Ohio report that John brought with us, there are a couple places where they incentivize up to one hundred percent, which which we have never considered here. We've always thought that that was a ridiculous amount. And we didn't want to go that way, but there are different philosophies at work here, and. Uh, you know, because we didn't want anybody, and I've said it, we don't want anybody to escape the bill entirely. But but the, that 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 analysis is a very complex plan, um, where they look at the possibility that you know the burden on the system is such that now they're going it from the burden on the system, but we may look at it as the the burden on you know the consumer, and these are recurring. There's a lot of licensing and stuff like that, but this is this is you know it's a big, and these are some of the entities that would have the wherewithal to do it. Um, and would and would and might want to. So. What color do I take for that one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suggest we go on to uh, uh, item number six. <sighs> And, and talk about it a little bit, and then just come back to five. Okay. Okay. And I think the, the, the logic will uh, show itself. Uh, this committee voted to go back to our sponsor and ask for an extension in time to do our work. We did that, and Paul Spector came back and suggested extending the time until June 13th. That's a Thursday. That's the night that the Joint Committee for uh, DPW and uh, meets. And so that's a couple of weeks extra. Yeah, after I regular meeting time? Uh, yeah, no. I didn't say yes or no because I wrote back to Paul and said, look, this is the committee decision, and I, as a chairman, I'm not going to make that decision. I think the committee <coughs> needs a piece of that. So I'm bringing it back to you tonight, to the committee, 
to see what you think about that. And I wanted to jump to this item because we've had a discussion here and now we're in the situation of do we think we can, after we've had this discussion, come to a, uh, a resolution in time for the 13th? That only gives us two meetings. Two meetings. And so I mm -hmm. thought it was appropriate to kind of jump ahead and get that date out there so we could think about that. And, and you don't have to accept it. Now, we can come back to this later after we've had some more discussion. But I wanted to put it on the table. I think it's entirely doable if we, just, if we decide that maybe we'll want to give them two proposals, one one way and one <clears throat> the other. I don't think that you're going to settle on one proposal by then, there's too much at stake. I would love to say, I'd, I'd love to see it, but the way we've been working, I don't see that kind of closure by then. That's just my opinion. Yeah, Ruth. How about it, Ruth? What? what? I, I agree with Jim. I think we can at least give it, get it down to two by then. I, I would like to get it down to one as well, but I think two is definitely a doable thing. Uh, well, I'm happy to take, I suppose, the extra meeting. I, you know, we can also sit in a session, a longer session. You know, it comes down to it. You can, we can do it like a negotiation until we wear them down. I'm, I'm, we have uh, a I've, I've been through negotiations. Well, yeah, we and have I know a hard way of the meeting times. I, su yeah. I suggest yeah. you that is not the <laughs> best as as way to come to a, a resolution. But if you're, if that's your plan, well, multiple suggestions, I, I, I would, uh, I would, I would consider that a, a, a really a failure of the committee. Bob, uh, I, I, I'm sure we can. Fine on two we agree on two we can recommend. I share Alex's goal of coming up with a dominant recommendation. That doesn't mean we can't mention something else we consider. But if we have if we have one that eight of us thinks the best idea, that's what we should recommend. So my goal is to get the one. Rick? Um I I'm I'm on both sides of this extension idea. I think that we can uh probably give them enough to let them battle it out themselves. Uh, but I'd also like us to get to the end of this and come up with one you know, one solid recommendation. So I don't think two weeks is long enough to do that. Yeah. I have no problem either way. I think if we choose to do it next week, we'll be done next week. And if we choose to do it in the following two weeks, we'll take two more weeks and we'll get it done then. So. But you mean you think we can meet their request? He thinks we can do it right now. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I just, I just, I, if I could just add, I don't think that we're going to deal with the credits issue uh, in that period of time at no. all. So that's all right. I mean, we can. I think we can deal with some of those issues as yeah. just a, a general broad recommendation, recommendation that you mm -hmm. right. some credits, some possibilities. Sorts. Yeah, and I think that that's. All we can do is yeah. recommend that these types of credits be considered. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. That's right. I, I I would agree with that. Uh, having looked at the the Northeast Ohio document, I mean, that was a project. Yeah. Somebody somebody put <laughs> Boku bucks into that, and we're not going to come up with something like that. They would have to they would have to accept the concept and then farm out the work to a consultant to do come up with something, like, or maybe just. Copy the copy, and cut and paste that one. But 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 we're not going to come up with anything that looks like that. But not CDM, right? We're not going to have CDM. No. <laughs> oh, God, no. Yeah. no, we're going to pay them quite a bit. CDM. I think we can be finished um, in the extension period. I would like to see Dan try to move us finish tonight. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> so is the consensus? Do you want to vote on it? We accept the extension to the thirteenth. 
I will commit to being done Mother Thursday. Mm -hmm. Before we do, I, 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 not being facetious, how would how would you wrap it up tonight? No, I'm okay. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> well, they're asking us because I see you as a man of action. Yes, in this case, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have to, we have to be there on the thirteenth. Conference committee, you were reporting to the conference committee, yeah. right? Yes. They meet on the 10th. <laughs> uh, Derek. The conference committee has um, discussed among ourselves that we would like I've to that. meet with you Thursday the 13th. Excellent. Yeah, that's what Paul sent, sent me an email. Yeah. yeah. That's our hope. <clears throat> and to hear our report, is that correct? Yes. Our recommendations, yes. not to hear us. I would also point out that the two people who are not here tonight are the two who have consistently voted that that meeting the 31st deadline was impractical, Very good point, Chris. Um, and that uh, I'm sure that if they were here, they would be arguing for additional time. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's an old story, as you know, if you're going to play, you've got to be here. I understand and that, Emory, but <laughs> against that, but the committee it functions as the whole, and I, I think we really have to honor that and I don't and they'll get another shot at it at the next meeting I mean we'll this, this won't go away yeah. I'd like to move that we extend it to the 13th we have to make our recommend report our recommendations on the 13th done. right yeah second all in favor aye, aye. opposed abstentions aye. recusals I'll abstain. one abstention two absences and uh, two absences we should probably record that uh, rest of the uh, One other comment. Uh, Paul, in his communication to us through Jim, had suggested he wanted us to vote on whether to establish an enterprise fund. And that's really not what he wants. He came back to me in a subsequent email, and what they want is to recommend a fair and equitable way to raise fees. That's what they're after whether an enterprise fund gets established by the, some other mechanism, uh, this committee doesn't have to deal with that and doesn't have to make a recommendation on that. Now, if we want to make a recommendation, we can, but, but we're, we're not, uh, that's not part of our charge. And that was a little bit unclear in some email that I'd gotten and was floating around, so I wanted to clarify that to make sure everybody understood. So I'll go back to Paul and say, we accept the 13. I believe we've also have already voted. We know we're going to recommend a fee structure of some sort. Mm -hmm. We've already taken that vote. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Yep. 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 Does he know that? Yes. Okay. Oh, I okay. Think he does. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to figure So now we have to figure out what the formula is, but we're in favor of fee structure in general. Yep. <clears throat> well, uh, Dan has introduced the idea that what that we separate out the two functions and pay for one of them uh, through the, the general tax or general fund. Isn't that so? There's not a consensus. I want to make a motion. See if you get a second. <laughs> I move that we separate the EPA mandated portion from. Flood control in our in our recommendations. I second. Be open for discussion. Yeah. Okay, just a question. Uh, but Rick had his hand up first. I think then we'll come for Ruth. Yeah, I I would not be in support of that because um, of the necessity of this ongoing deferred maintenance uh, problem that we have. Let alone uh, replacement of the pump station. If we leave it up to a vote, um, it may threaten our you know, potential opportunity to replace that pump station, and I'm not. I don't. I think we're here because of that. So, I would. That would worry me if we put that out to a prop two and a half vote. Ruth, I think was next. Um, I'm just not sure I understand. I know you listed the pump station, but you've got a whole long list of flood control problems out there, and a whole long list of citizens that are waiting to get their areas fixed. That aren't even scheduled so I'm not sure how that would work in when they go to, to look at this stuff and they come in and they say well okay where's mine where's mine where's mine how would all that get dealt with I mean in, in when you when you talk about addressing the flood control um, 
would there be a list that they could look at or um, because if you're going to specifically state pump station are you going to specifically state all the different things or how I'm just I'm, yeah, I'm glad you bring this up because this has been one of the things that's really been gnawing at me is that we have this the budget is such that and it's been stated that well it might be two million it might be six million one year <laughs> which means that the fee goes triple and so we have a, a lot of fluidity a lot of flux in the in the estimates of what these infrastructure costs are going to be I think that we're putting the cart before the horse until we know what is it going to what do we got to do what is that going to cost and then how do we plan it and what's the best way of planning it and if it's a long-term capital project versus ongoing maintenance how do you build that in on the cost of money basis with bonding and all of that and come up with a real budget because I, I, I have this feeling like we're setting something up that is a very open-ended um, uh, fee structure. Uh, it's, it, it worries me. Yeah, it could blow up it our faces. Because I'm sure it will worry everybody <laughs> yeah. when it gets out of here. I know, I know it worries you. Yes, That's why you come every week. <laughs> yeah, very much. Yeah. So, let me, yeah. let me, your nickel's worth. Let me just give you a little bit of history on this. In 1940, they built the flood control, the levee system, the whole shebang, and funded it a hundred percent. The federal government. Thank you. And then they turned it over to the city and they said, here it's yours, you operate it. Now they came just a year ago or <coughs> a year and a half ago to us and said, you know, with the way uh, we're having floods and rainfall and everything, we're not sure that the levee system is built high enough to control, plus there's a lot of maintenance in here that has to be taken care of. So you guys do it. No money, but you guys do it. The, uh, you know that the, the equipment in there, you've all gone down to see it, uh, to see it. it's, it's, uh, Dan, antiquated. Vision, did you? No. Let's let, let, let's let it's, it's, it's antiquated mm -hmm. equipment. It's it's seventy years old. You can't get parts for it. This isn't something that we should separate out and wait for somebody else to do the funding. We should look at it and say this is we'll try to encompass this. Now, nobody has stated what type of work is needed on the flood control. Is it an upgrade with the equipment in there or do you need a whole new system? We don't know that. But I think with an upgrade, and I'm the guy that ran it for many years, with an upgrade that that could function well on into the future. But it's not decided. That's just my opinion. But for us to take and separate it out now, away from this, I think is a wrong move. There isn't any money out there from the federal government to do this work. Alex and then Bob. I, 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 I uh, agree with Jim, and I, I wouldn't support this. It, uh, you need to give the DPW the flexibility to use uh, a specific amount of money the way they want it. They all have to go into the pumping station. Uh, the political decision is the city of Northampton will spend two million, one million, some amount of money a year on flood control and stormwater. That's a political decision that other people will make. It's not necessarily, and shouldn't, and we certainly in our recommendation we say, it's not open-ended. Uh, the city council must vote every year to renew this, or to, to increase the fee. But it, you know, what they're asking for is a predictable stream of money uh, to take care of a problem that we've we've been unable to do with the general fund, to ask people to for an override. I mean, already uh, their override is split between the people who have kids in the school and people who don't. People who live in the high ground, and just people who live in the low ground. Exactly. It's just not a. Bob, let's let Dan. Dan, that. I'm not. 
suggesting that we don't deal with it. What I'm suggesting is that we deal with it separately. So my proposal is to, is to not remove one and only deal with one. The proposal is that we don't deal with them in the same way together. So that we have, <coughs> that we look at the maintenance and monitoring as that's, that's a formula. And I think, I think, we're, I think we're done. It, any one of these formulas will pretty much hit that pretty easily. I think and then we can deal with, all right, now, now this, this other piece of it, which is a lot more complicated, you know, because it's not so much about water necessarily going out as much as it's about rising water and the effects of that overwhelming the entire system. And I think that it's fundamentally, it's not based on the surface runoff. That's, that's, that's my intuitive sense. So not that it doesn't have to be dealt with. I, mm. 100% there. We, we, you know, somehow we need to come up with the revenue stream. The question is, how do we do it so it's fair and equitable? And equitable does come back to. I mean, Emory gave us those definitions. One of the the um, uh, uh, thresholds or bars for that is that ability to pay, and the ability to pay has to be taken into consideration here. So, and I I just feel like when we take a very cut and dry approach to this large nut that we're trying to crack, it doesn't, we lose, we lose equitability. And I think that's, that's where, we're, where I'm finding the struggle every week. Deal with $500,000, it's about runoff and solids loading and, and all of that flow coming off of properties, it makes total sense to me to make that a, you know, impervious or a combination of impervious and impervious. But when we get to the flood control, there's something about that that just doesn't ring true for me as a being in purpose. And we should need to deal with it separately. That's that's my that's my motion. Not to eliminate it. Huh? So I I mean I understand the distinction between flood control issues and stormwater runoff in general. Um is the same thing to be lost on the public. And if we were to take that recommendation and set up a fee system to pay for mandated stuff only and let stormwater wait till we have a better idea, we'll never get any money for stormwater effectively, I don't think. I think this, that the fact that we have a charge to set up a, a fee structure for flood control and stormwater is a rare opportunity. And if we think they both should be done, then we can recommend a formula that charges differentially for the benefits one different property owners get. But I think we need to... I'm just saying ad address them separately. I'm not saying eliminate. Just to reiterate, the motion is not to eliminate the flood control part of the budget. Okay. The, rec the motion is to deal with, the f with flood control and stormwater runoff maintenance-related issues as two separate pieces. parts of the formula. Well, piece of the same part line. A, part B, okay. and they may and they have different okay. considerations. Okay. And that wasn't clear. Maybe Thank there's you. issues with doing that, yeah. but it, within a fee structure. Or? Within a fee structure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's the, if I understand it, uh, but part A is is the EPA part, and part B or whatever we would call it is flood control. Yeah. And other stormwater, it's not going to be as simple as that. I mean, we know that the storm drain system needs substantial work throughout the city. So that's different than, I think, what you meant well, by flood control. And that's, that's a whole, I mean, how, how, what we do with that, and that's <laughs> part of the discussion, <laughs> yeah. which is what's what, and how does the budget, yeah. okay. that's part of it. Would, I would ask uh, Ned or, or Jim, can, can you separate out those? In your mind, can you want a budget? Separate? Before we do that, let's ask the committee if they want to hear that. We, we, well, Ruth had actually had her hand up too. So, um, I this is just going back to in our charge. Does it ever actually even discuss flood water? Oh, yeah, I, that's I that's don't have my water. thing here. Now, in the charge, I think, and I'm sorry, I don't have my things with me. I've been out all day working on the project, but <laughs> I believe it talks about just about stormwater, and then the the presentation that we had in the beginning talked about flood water and the EPA and, and rainwater. So it's just talking about the water drainage system. And I believe I, we read that charge in the beginning, we went back and asked Paul Spector, does our charge include flood control? And he said, yes, it does. Yeah. So it was a typo in the charge originally. 
it was certainly the intention of our establishing group to include flood control. Well, the, uh, with all due respect, it does not say that in, no? in, in the charge. No, the, the, the charge as I have it, I can read it for you. I don't doubt what you. I don't doubt that flood control was not there. We're talking about stormwater. And so what happened? What happened early in one of our early meetings? If people said, "Oh, there's no flood control mentioned in that," excuse and me, so, what do you think stormwater is? Oh, I agree. I agree. I just think that splitting it out is flood water. Yeah. So I don't think we should split it out. Potentially flood water. Can you not falling on us? Can, yeah. us. Yeah. can you have a flood without? Uh, can we have a flood here without a storm? Without a storm. And we Good. can. Yes. And you need to have flood. You need to have flood control for that. Well, and that's that's sort of the. And the uh, okay, okay. Right. Heavy heavy snow up north. A lot of you know a lot They're of a lot of belt. I mean that's. Am I cutting hair? Maybe I'm cutting hair. It's but I, I do remember <laughs> it's it the way I do remember it the way Bob does, which mm -hmm. was this was effectively a, an error in the charge that was at that was reconciled at a later date. Do you have? Oh, I was just going to say that I think uh, there was discussion in the early meetings about the fact that flood control wasn't included, and that it was Terry had included in his discussion and presentation in the first meeting. Um, I would have to check the minutes. I remember there was a discussion as Bob had suggested. I do think Paul Spector had been consulted about what is the breadth of the charge, because it's an important point. I know if David Peace was here, he'd be saying, what does the charge say? Well, I'm not saying that we shouldn't include it. I'm just saying that for that reason we shouldn't split it. You know, we should just. Oh, well, that's it. That's interesting. Terry? Yeah. Paul has been guilty several times, I think, of perhaps being not precise enough in his language. And I believe he did clarify the fact that, yes, of course, we mean flood control also. Uh, just like his comments on the Enterprise Fund, I think perhaps he was using guilty of not using language that was precise enough. But I believe he circled back to us in an email that, that yes, it does include plug and roll. Well, I think the way to resolve this is to send him a, some email and ask him to revise the charter. I have no I, doubt oh, that I, I personally am I very uncomfortable operating in what I'll call an uh, environment where we do these things by word of mouth and we don't have documentation that you can get yourself into a whole lot of trouble you don't want to get into we don't have any this is the official document and no matter what somebody may have said privately or any other thing best practice would tell you that we need documentation I mean I, I'm really firm on that I, I, I'm going to give it in ground because if we go to the best practice manual I guarantee you that's what it will say Dan just to, to reaffirm what Ruth is saying is that her bring, bringing up this point, which we've now added an, yet another meeting, I think, to our whole discussion potentially, um, but it's about not splitting it. It's basically that flood control and EPA was put in and, yeah. and captured by stormwater, and that's it says don't split it up. It doesn't mean necessarily that we can't split it up because we're still dealing with it. We're just dealing with them separately. It's, we're not going against the charge unless we decide that the charge is no, no longer <laughs> correct and all this time we've been just banging our heads against the wrong wall. Exactly. I, I didn't I mean we have to go out and get... I don't feel that way. I think we've been, we've been on a task with stormwater and yeah. flood control. Yeah. I don't think that's, yeah. that's really, that's the question. The motion on the table, again, is just to deal with them separately. Not to it, eliminate two parts of the same Two form. parts of the same form. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Do to try, if we can, to at least to look at at whether that simplifies the discussion and potentially the the selling right. yes. of of this formula in the end, because that's I think got to be part of the recommendation. It's something that's viable. So, are you, are you saying on like the bill that people get, they will get two different line items for what they owe, no. or or just when they call and say, "Why do I owe so much?" They'll be like, "Well, there's two separate formulas here." It, one is this and one is that. It would be a single fee. Yeah, the two okay. Parts. But the calcul you know, but anybody who wants to look at the calculation would would be able to see clearly how what it's based on. Sort of like the commons fee that I had in my model, which had fees calculated for uh, with two sets of logic. Yes. And added yeah. together. Yep. And yours would be a different pair logic pair. <clears throat> 
Ned would like to make a comment. So for the committee, I believe it was played out in the first meeting we had about trying to link stormwater and flood control together. The flood control station can run under <laughs> a local storm event, and it will run when the Connecticut River is not flooding. Oh, yeah. And vice versa, it needs to run when the Connecticut River is flooding, and there's an internal rain event happening with the city outside the dike. So we could get one of these local deluges, and flood control will be running, yet Connecticut River's flowing fine, fading oh, down. Sure. That happens all the time. So they yeah. are interrelated with each other. That helps. More discussion on Dan's motion? Chris? Um, my concern <coughs> is, is that by separating them, and I understand you're saying we're going to do both, we're not, we're not dropping one off the table. Uh, is that, as a practical matter, we may not find funding that way, and and sort of the kind of three principles. But so I'm approaching it from a funding perspective rather than a um, sort of the three principles that I have in my mind as I as I think about what the best outcome that I will support is. Is it gets to what Alex was saying about um, a reliable, steady source of funding, uh, one that captures. Does not rely on, on on taxes, so we capture the the uh, the tax exempt programs. And the third is one that does not rely in any significant way on on overrides, um, because I have no confidence in our ability to do that. So for me, when I think of alternative funding, I don't think of overrides. I think of I think of borrowing. And your cost of money comment is, is speaks to that as well. So those are just the things that I need. I. For me, I need to get out of this when, when we when, with whatever solution we come up with. So, if I understand correctly, what you propose, Dan, is still a fee, which would yield all the benefits you're concerned about. I think. Yes. If not an override or a general fund contribution, pure fee. Okay. And as a practical matter, then would shift some of the cost of this back onto residential property. Looking at this chart, when we look at it again after almost any way of separating these out. Residential properties will bear a larger proportion of the bill. That would probably be yeah, the probably so, absolutely, certainly so. In the bulk of the city, <coughs> by any measure. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think the the thing that I see here is the underlying concern on the total budget, and uh, and the way we propose whatever fee that we use, whether we propose it come in the enterprise fund or whether it uh, come in a fund uh, such as they had for the uh, ambulance fund, for instance, where it was a, went into a separate account and, uh, and in order to allocate any of the money for any of the jobs, they go before city council and uh, they, they get money from that fund. Um, the the concern is, boy, this thing's going to escalate. This thing's going to go crazy. Well, tie it to an escalation clause. Tie it to uh, uh, a cost of living or a uh, two and a half or, or, or whatever. It can't go up more than so much a year. But you would have an increase in that so that you would be able to take on more of a load. Now, if you find in three years with a escalation clause in there that you're still not meeting it, then you got to come back and change it. Yeah. And so, just so I'm clear, the fees get figured on the basis of stormwater and flood control. The formula. So Alex gets twenty percent, and I, and for one, and seventy-five for the other. You don't propose in any way that the fees be changed year to year based on the expenses for those things. Is that right? So pure, it's a pure rate setting mechanism. It's not intended to, to reflect actual cost in any given year. Just a formula. That it is just a formula. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Mm. So if, 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 if you operate under a, an enterprise fund, it means that the... Uh, Conference committee or the DPW first would submit to the conference committee. This is what we need for that year. The conference committee would look it over. They would bring it to city council. The city council would have to vote it. 
I the other way is is an automatic escalator. So it's it's either or. Yeah. Huh? And I th I think having city council set the rates for at least the first five years is definitely the best rate protection system we could look for. I would hope we could recommend that. We can recommend something, but I'm saying city, what I want to recommend is city council set the rates for at least the first five years, not the DPW. But the, the city council is going to, I mean. They're going to follow the recommendation of the BPW, perhaps, but they're going to be the people whose names are on the, on the bill. Well, they are anyways. Any increase in capital improvements goes to city yeah. council, so it's an automatic. But the water and sewer don't get set by city council. No. Yes, they do. They get voted by city council. They do. Okay. If I'm, the am I wrong? In, 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 incorrect on that, but we can't borrow money without the city council. Uh, so even if we have budgeted money in order to borrow some money. They have to approve Do the something. Oh, so they, okay. no, we can't borrow anything. But you set there. the, the yeah. rates for sewer so, sort of and water. Let's be sure we, everybody understands that that uh, the city council does not set the rates for sewer and water. Correct. Yes. Right. That, that's right. So, but the, so but they, they vote the budget. They, vote, they have to vote. <clears> they have to vote for it. money, that, that vote has to be approved. So that's a big difference in a practical way. Yeah. Right. I can yeah. see that. Oh. Setting the rates is different than approving a budget. Yeah. But yeah, I was just going to sort of, Bob just said that, that, you know, having the city council, um, you know, those elected officials set those, and the, the idea of having some time frame where, as we start this, that we can count on that for three years or five years. It's not going to change, no surprise, we've had enough time to think about it, forethought, it's not going to hit us as a surprise within the first five years. If, if in that five years we decide, okay, an upgrade is going to work instead of a, you know, complete overhaul, then that's going to, you know, dictate what that might increase after the fifth year or, or whatever. But it, to me, that's critical that we don't surprise people with a low fee to start with and then just skyrocket that I fee. With you. I, I just can't support yeah. that concept at all. And, and I think that's going to, I think what David said, in the, in the beginning, when I think our first meeting was, you know, people are really upset about this. They don't even know it. <laughs> you know, and, and I really think that, that the idea of, uh, you know, come along, let's start this, and then next year, instead of Smith College paying $80,000, they're a quarter of a million dollars. That's just not, can't have that. Well, do we have more discussion on, on uh, Dan's motion? Chris? Uh, I guess it's sort of dance motion. It's just, I, <clears throat> I mean, I've I've spoken in favor of some sort of cap and phase out or for for palatability reasons. But I I do want to point out that I think that putting rate decisions in the hands of politicians can can be very pro problematic. Um, when when BPW looks at the projected rate increases for water and sewer, we have in front of us a set of very hard numbers about costs and budgets and we tend to adjust them based on revenue needs um, and I'm concerned that that with the City Council doing that I'm not going to oppose it I'll, I'll probably I'm going to support it because I think I think there are good reasons to do it I just sort of raising a cautionary tale that it, that you know Bismarck said politics is like sausage you don't really want to watch it being made um, there are decisions that that City Council will base their there are factors that city council will base their decisions on that may not be sa soundly grounded <laughs> <Yeah>. in information. <laughs> I'd be happy to see an attempt for our next meeting, Dan, to have such a two-part model. I know you have plenty of free time. It's a three-day <laughs> I think that's premature, Bob. I think we should uh, have, we have to vote. I'm just saying I would encourage people. We have to vote to see if we're going to do it. <laughs> do we, do we want to uh, vote on this motion? I mean, we've talked about it a lot, and we've gone around, and uh, unless somebody's got something new to, to bring here, let's, uh, shall we hear from our 
I wish Barry, I'd just like to ask a quick question. Um, it, strikes, it strikes me that even without a vote, you could make bring forward a proposal, a model, just as yeah. we've all been bringing yeah. forward models, that, that illustrates what you're talking about. Yeah. By taking a vote, it seems to me you're saying, okay, those other models, they're out. Yeah. They're yeah. gone. Right. It must be this new model. Because we've voted that this will be the model, although we don't have any idea what that would look like yet. We've done that before here. We have. <laughs> <laughs> and we voted the other way than the old rock Okay. Well, I'm welcome. I've heard something a whole lot. But the end, uh, my understanding of the motion was that we consider this. Yeah. 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 And it's not to Just, do something, yeah. it's to consider it. It's not that it's... That, that's how open it your mind. Yeah. I guess it's a well, motion uh, to open our well, mind. With all due respect to Terry, he is not on the committee. We are the committee, and we should do as we judge appropriate. Of course. But then would you? I have a really strong feeling about it's. It's this is our committee, and and we should, uh, in our infinite wisdom or lack thereof, uh, make a decision about it. Jim? May I ask? Define your motion again. <laughs> Poor Dan. I think, we should, I think we should charge by impervious area. <laughs> <laughs> do, now, but, but do we really need a motion to talk about this? No. Well, no. Dan, no. We really no. Don't. Yeah. it's a matter of protocol. He made a motion. Now, I withdraw my motion. We, then yeah, we need yeah. somebody in the second. I withdraw the second. And, and so now we can we can stop right. that. But I, I hate to have a motion on the table. We're recording the minutes, yep. and somebody asks us, "What the hell are you guys doing?" Well, we may not know, but we can at least do an orderly procedure. And I think that. So, Rick, next. I, I would ask Dan if he you know feels like you you can do that. I mean, you've done a lot of work already, but it might be interesting for us to have that in front of us. Um, you know, in in some way because. You know, you do make a point with a, uh, I, I think what Jim said uh, earlier, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm still getting my head around it, but uh, if, if you're willing to do that, I think, mm -hmm. I think we'd all, uh, okay, thank it. you. Yeah. Well, uh, before we ask Dan to do that, there could be a considerable amount of work. Yeah. And I personally don't do things unless I had some reasonable belief that's going to be a positive outcome. And so I would ask the committee, what is it that it would take for you to accept such a formula? I mean, what, what are you looking for so that he doesn't go off and do a lot of work and then come back and, and I don't, I'm not, that hasn't been a bar that we've set for anybody's proposals. Yeah. And I don't feel that it's, this, you know. Okay, if you're um, willing to take that on, I'm, I'm relaxed. But, but there, I know there's going to be a fair amount of work, and there's a lot of work that's gone in by Doug and Jim. It's, yeah, I mean, these are, they're, they're, the guys they're, work, they're the guys right? that do most of the work. And, and so. nothing is impossible for the person that doesn't have to do it themselves. And it's easy <laughs> to ask other people to do things, but... Uh, <laughs> we're going to get a new model. Uh, yeah. Great. I, I, Maybe. Just to speak to that, I think <laughs> that one of the benefits, Emory, would be to uh, maybe get an idea of what's in these budgets a little bit better. In my mind, it's hard for me to separate out, like what Ned said earlier about, you know, localized lighting. But, you know, but, but our, our charge is not I understand. to do the budget. It's, but it's, it's an exercise that he's willing to do that would give us that information. I think all information is important. So, okay. Yeah, I... Uh, it's just that it, it would be a benefit to me. Okay. And it's not necessary for the committee, but... It, my mind, that would be an interesting take. I think Dan brings a lot to the table when he oh, there's no doubt about it. So. <laughs> but he also has a day job, full time job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the family to support, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be sensitive that we don't. Uh, uh, He's uh, free not to do it. Too. My particular. Well, I, don't, I don't think we have any report from from Jim from DPW, they supplied us with this data. I don't think there's anything else you want to put on the table, is it, Jim? Uh, last time, we, Dan helped us fill out this matrix here, and I got it printed up. So I'll just pass around a copy. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I marked it up uh, to show where, where we agree and where we don't agree, and maybe try to make some sense out of where to go next? Oh, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Hogging the ball. What so the ones is? that are in yellow are, are... Consensus? Yeah, pretty much consensus. The commons was uh, pretty much a split. And it's my opinion, we're not likely to resolve that between now and the 13th. Which? The, the commons. commons. What's the good of the commons? Unless somebody's got a really good idea of what we might do with that. Well, to move things forward, if we're not necessarily trying to just offer one proposal, because there's a split, I would say there's good reason there to have one of our recommendations be yeah, commons. Absolutely. Includes the commons. There'd be no reason to not do yeah. that. How does the rest of the committee feel about that? It's a good idea. So one model is going to be a commons model. And we have a good write-up on that. We have, a, you know, the numbers. That, you know, I think it's all been... Hashed there's out. a lot of positive attributes to it, so I think we can actually take that and, one and think, could, make could that a recommendation. Could we decide which of those common models we think is, would be the one to, to do? Well, yeah. I said yes for the commons. Yeah. I was looking at the new... Uh, Reckman model. New. Yeah, the one that he put out last week, because the commons in there actually acts like a floor, right. which is what yep. I like. Yep. Okay. So that's the, the uh, updated one. It's the one labeled Culhane Reckman commons, commons included, included. Commons portion yep. only. That's Common the one included. I like. The commons portion only is relevant. Yeah, no, no, I right. understand, but yeah. the column is 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 that column is marked with your name. Yeah. So you're thinking the comments included one? Yeah. yeah. So we'll, uh, that looks like that's one model that will go forward. Okay. And, and I... In, ter in, ter in terms of one of the, the initial discussion that I had brought out regarding sort of the equity, it is, it's the one that probably on a percentage basis starts to get closest to... At least it makes motions towards a distribution that starts to be a little bit closer to parity with per capita. Parity. Yes, per capita or property value or however you want to look at it. It just it shifts a little bit out, so it's in Felton too. No, in oh, Felton oh, with the comments. <coughs> okay. yeah, what we'd go forward with wouldn't show the right hand column. Yes. It would only the right. left hand That's column right. in that. Big column. Comments included. So, yeah. in oh. fact, both figures, the way it's calculated, there'd be two calculations which were done by the billing office and added together to come up with the fee, like Dan's fee, hypothetically, would be as well. Two different numbers which make up. Yeah. And because of the commons part, that puts a floor under a bunch of property. So, if we did, let's say this was, let's say this was the final recommendation. Mm -hmm. Would the commons portion only be the floor, like Ruth suggested? Would that be so you could <coughs> potentially get credits up to that point? Would that be uh, that'd, that'd be a way to quite do a way it. of going? Yeah. Yeah. Way to do it. Yeah. Say that again. So the commons portion would represent sort of the, the minimum fee that you could you get. You got a parcel fee and a commons fee. And what he's saying is that you could do good works on your property and, and get credits against your parcel fee, but no credits right. against the commons fee. Oh, the commons fee would be paid by all. Yes, there is yeah, a commons fee. That would be fee, like a floor you couldn't right. go beneath. So yeah. everybody would always have a bill of at least that Yes, much. that's right. right. Which that's is right. reflected in the undeveloped land. Yeah, that's right. Right. Is so there, there is just a difference. So that's a floor. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, so it looks like the thing we didn't agree on moved us forward <laughs> at least one step, right? So we have a, a, a model, one model, which would contain the commons, and we want that because we're, we're mostly split here <clears throat> with good reason. I mean, there's, there's arguments on both sides here. That's not a... and the other issue that... Uh, that we tried to deal with is caps, and uh, and so we did a little bit on that. But some people had some 
least from my perception, some concerns about that. Uh, we just talked about that the commons portion might re represent one kind of a cap. That is, no I mean, one would minimum. pay. Yeah, no, right. No one would pay less than that. Then there are commons for right. whatever it happens. That, that's so. That's one kind of cap. But that doesn't say anything about rates or rate of increase or total amount. So there are, there are a number of things to think about when we think about yeah. caps. But at least th this commons gives us a, a floor for a minimum bill. That's a lower cap, if you will, minimum. So, Jim, you had proposed a cap rate well, there was, increase. So that yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple that you can, you can tie up to two and a half. You know, say it can't go up more than two and a half percent a year for the first five years and see how you work out or whatever that yeah. time yep. frame was. Or, or you can tie it to uh, cost of living, yep. uh, which is set by the government. So, you know, it's, it's either way. I think if you do a fee, if you do a fee, uh, and uh, like, like the ambulance fee was, and um, everything goes in there, then, then you could um, put a cap on it. And, but uh, I'm not sure how you'd do that with an enterprise fund. Maybe you could. Well, just just I, by writing in. I suggest taking that part off the table. If, if we want to suggest 2.5%, I'm just picking that as a number, then let the powers that be decide if they want to go with an enterprise fund, they got to figure that out. Well, I don't think we should try to figure that out. We don't out. even have to no. give them a number, I, too. We could just say that we want to encourage we, restraint. We'd like to encourage that a cap be in place. Yeah. Fine. Potentially cost of living or yeah. oh. or inflation, whatever it is. Let, Some kind of a cap. The, that's defendable. That's our recommendation. So yeah. a, a rate cap. increase cap. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not a, gen, not a total fund cap. No, rate increase. Rate annual cap. rate, annual rate so increase. So everybody cap. can themselves have that cap on their figure in their heads. In their heads. Projected. Yeah, I, I think the general public is really scared of this thing because they're afraid it's going to jump up, skyrocket. Double. Well, specific skyrocket. public right here, very concerned. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So can we? We know we've got this this great matrix. Do we want to go through and do a vote on? Just a quick question on the caps. I know John um, had uh, raised concerns about a cap on the overall fund. If we if we need, you know, ten million well, a year, how do we do it? There can be wording in there.